Good morning, Calvary Chapel Good young morning. people. Good morning. Good morning. We are calling you today from the South Pole. We are. It's so cold outside. Tomorrow morning it will be 19 degrees in Rockport, Texas. Texas isn't supposed to be 19 degrees. And we're just big babies. We are. We're big babies. <laughs> it's so, cold. It's cold. So are, what is are we going to study this week and what did we study last week? Well, let's start with last week. Um, we learned last week that Jesus, in addition to being a great teacher, is and was a good healer. And we learned that he healed people because he loves people. He loves us. And he expressed that love by meeting their physical needs as well as their spiritual needs or their needs of faith and of the heart. And when Jesus healed other people's bodies, he also set a really great example of compassion, of caring about what people need and trying to do our very best to meet those needs if we can. Yeah. So he, he, in this case, he was a healer and a teacher at the same time. What are we going to learn about this week? Well, this week we're going to see the compassionate side of Jesus. Mm -hmm. When We're going to be studying how he fed the 5,000, mm -hmm. which in reality was probably closer to 15, 16,000 people. Because when they refer to the 5,000, they're talking about 5,000 men. Right. And there were obviously wives and children. Yeah. So there were many more than 5,000. But we'll see how he meets those needs out of compassion in love and concern. We'll also see how Jesus teaches his disciple a very important lesson. And we should learn that lesson this week too. And that is to always go to God first when we have difficult situations to deal with. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to study and we're going to learn about thanking God for everything he has given us and how wisely, how we should very wisely use the gifts that he has given us, the things that we have. And we're going to study a little bit about trusting in God's unlimited resources. He has, he always has whatever it is we need. And by being good stewards of what he gives us and not wasting what God has given us, no matter how big or small we're showing our thanks, it's important that we don't waste. It's important that we use everything God gives us at, to the very best purpose we can. And it also shows us that even though we think we have very little, God can take very little and do right. tremendous things with it. That's right. Will you lead us in prayer? Yes, I will. All right. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity uh, to be with our young people, uh, to teach and worship. We ask for your guidance, direction, that you would give us wisdom of tongue, that is, we teach. Uh, and share with our young people, Lord, that we do it in a way that they uh, can understand it and that we um, just be good teachers that you want us to be. That we know that at the very core of everything that we do, you are at that core. You are the center of our lives and the center of whatever we do. And we just need to learn to depend more on you each and every day, no matter if you're six years old or 75 years old. We always need to learn to depend on you. So guide us this morning. Bless our children. Bless our family, uh, church family. And uh, we just ask that you take these few moments and use it to glorify your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to start in Matthew 14. And I'm going to read verses 13 through 16. And then Julia will continue on in the same chapter. Yeah. So starting with verse 
13, when Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. Now what he had heard was of concerning the death of John the Baptist. John the Baptist's disciples had come to Jesus and told him that he was dead. And Jesus loved John mm -hmm. and he missed him. And so he was seeking some solitary time. But he knew people would follow and he was prepared to deal with whatever crowds that would would follow him. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. But Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. So continuing in Matthew chapter 14, I'm going to pick up at verse 17. That's the verse immediately after the last one Rudy read. And I'm going to read to verse 21. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them to me here, Jesus said, and he looked directly, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. It's unusual that we find only a young lad had food that the Bible mentions. He had small loaves of bread, which were probably two, three inches in size, and a couple dried fish. Did not seem like much when you looked at the vast amount of people. But, but he had the idea to offer them. He had the faith that what small amount that he right. had, that Jesus could do something with it. And that whatever small thing he could do, it was enough to offer. Jesus could have easily just said, let there be food, and everybody had food. Mm -hmm. But God chooses to work through humans. He has done that throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. So he uses this young boy to show who has faith in Christ, and he uses his disciples and he uses this teaching moment to sh teach the disciples to have faith because they should have asked first, Jesus, can you help us? Mm -hmm. If they, It was only a short while prior to this time that uh, Christ turned the water into wine at a wedding feast. Mm -hmm. So they know he had great, were able to do great miracles. But they failed to ask for his help. So that's part of the, today's lesson is learning to ask for God's help. Sure. All right. It's time for questions. Is it my turn to ask the question? No, you don't get I get to ask. I'm older, so I get to ask the question. All right. Okay. I'll try my best to answer. Well, we'll see. These are tough questions. What types of people came to hear Jesus teach? all kinds of people. You know, we hear about diversity, and this was a diverse group of people. It was, that means they were from all different social classes. They were rich, they were poor. They were from all different kinds of cultures. There were Jews, there were Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So all different people from different kinds of religions. 
But people love to hear Jesus teach. And one of the reasons that the people came in such large numbers to hear him teach is that he was able to relate very complicated concepts in a way that everyone could understand. So, in other words, people go see a speaker who says things that makes sense to them and, mm -hmm. and touches them and gives them hope. And, that's and why Jesus they're... was very good at doing that. He was. He was. He made the difficult simple. What did Jesus command the disciples to do? Well, he, he told them to feed them, to feed the people, that there were all these people. The disciples had told them, you know, this is a really big crowd. Maybe we should just get them to move on their way so they can go do things like eat. But Jesus said, feed them. He said, you know, you know 5,000 people and the women and children, this is not only a task that takes a lot of, a lot of food, but it's also very complicated. It's just, how do you cook that much food at once? And then distributing it, and they were already hungry, so they didn't. They weren't necessarily going to be patient. They were also hungry, and they didn't have a whole lot of ingredients. They didn't have a big pantry and big refrigerator and a big freezer full of no stuff. No in and out close by. No in and out close by. No in and out anywhere near there. But Jesus. In the end, they felt that Jesus had given them an impossible task to do. But really, Jesus was giving them an opportunity. And it was a chance for the, for the disciples to recognize who Jesus was and to rely on, on his power, to rely on him. And it's not that he's like a, a genie who makes things pop out of a bottle or that he pops out of a bottle to grant all of our wishes. But it, it should have occurred to the to the disciples to ask Jesus, how do we solve this problem of all these people who need to eat and we have so little food on yeah, it? It was a teaching moment. He it was teaching his core disciples, the 12, mm -hmm. to teaching them to learn to depend on him mm -hmm. for the impossible mm -hmm. because Jesus always makes the impossible possible. What food did the boy offer up? He had two fish and he had five barley loaves. Now barley is a type of grain that is ancient and you can still buy it in the grocery store. In fact, we made beef and barley soup not too long ago. It's true. Five barley loaves. Now they could have been long, big loaves and the fish might have been big fish but there were lots of people, and there were five barley loaves. 5,000 men, five barley loaves, that's 1,000 men per loaf. That's, that's got to be a big loaf, because it, it, it wasn't going to be enough. No, it wasn't. No. And this was the food that the boy had, and it was enough food for him to feed himself, and, and maybe a friend or a couple people around him, but it wasn't enough to feed the whole crowd. And even as a boy, he would have known that this is, this is what I have, and Jesus, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it away. And, you know, that's, that's a heart, because he's giving his food away. He may have also been hungry. He probably was hungry. But God could have fed that crowd without the little boy giving up his food, certainly. And he, the lesson isn't to tell us that he needs us to do something in order for him to do something. Because Jesus could have simply miraculously commanded that the food appear. But instead, he gave the boy a chance in much the same way that, Jesus, that the disciples had a chance to show faith in Jesus. And the boy took the chance. And the boy was able to show his faith. And, and he trusted Jesus to provide. He, off, he it offered Jesus an opportunity to glorify God and to demonstrate his power. And to witness to the disciples. Absolutely. And, and a lot of this was geared to teach the disciples. Not only to teach the crowd, right. but really to teach the core people who were to spread the good news after his death. And we go on to four. What did Jesus do first 
with the loaves and fishes. He gave thanks. He thanked God for the fish. So, in a way, what we need to learn is to be thankful for whatever we have from God. Because everything we have, no matter if we have a small home, we have a big house, we have a fancy car, we have an old beat up, whatever it is, uh, an old television, new television, God provides all of that for us. Right. And we need to learn to be satisfied with what God provides. And thankful. And, and thankful and grateful. And right. Paul teaches that throughout his writings about being content with what the Lord provides each one of us. And once we learn that, then God will do other things in our lives. Some he will give uh, wealth to. Some he will give great happiness to. But we, whatever it is, we need to be content with how God leads our life. And if we are in sync with God, and we have God close to our heart, we will always be contented. And if we're contented, we are happy, even in difficult times. So, how did these lessons that Jesus was teaching, how did it help the disciples? Well, it showed the disciples the power of God. I mean, here he has, you know, we talked about maybe the fish were big. In all likelihood, they were probably very small because this was probably the boy's lunch. Probably so. And the bread was probably not a large loaf. It was probably... Um, probably some, like five little biscuits. Probably. Enough for a boy to have lunch. And what Jesus wanted to show the disciples, and the reason he said feed them, and that had to be a shock if, you, if you're the 12 and you're looking at 10,000 people, 13,000 people, whatever the number is, and Jesus says, go feed them. I mean, what are you going to do? You look at two little fish yeah. and dried fish get very small and they get pretty skinny. Uh, and again, this was probably a boy's lunch we're talking about. And the amazing thing is, it appears he's the only one that brought food out of the whole group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of God's plan. Because he was going to use this moment to show his power. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now in six, we, the final question is, After, how many baskets of food were left at the end? There were 12 baskets of food left at the end. And what did Jesus instruct the disciples to do? Aha! Uh -huh. To collect all 12 baskets, pick up all the scraps of fish and bread, and not to waste anything. Now, we don't know what they did with them. They could have saved them for their meal. But Christ is teaching us not to waste what he gives us. And unfortunately, a lot of people do that. I think also that perhaps Jesus knew that the disciples would be surprised. Not only that when they were commanded to feed the 5,000, Jesus made it possible based on the gift the little boy made. And not only was it possible to feed them, but it was abundant and there was more than enough. That it wasn't that the disciples may have underestimated Jesus, but they way, way underestimated. Way underestimated. And it says everybody ate until they were full. So nobody was hungry. Nobody only got a little piece. Everybody ate until they were full. And then there was the abundance of the 12 basket. Which made a miracle look even more miraculous and brought that lesson home. The, the disciples who were told to feed, and they, they didn't understand. 
they, they couldn't. And then the, them going out and collecting all of the leftover, I believe it made a, a lesson, an impression that they never would have forgotten. Oh, I'm sure. And it, and it shows us that when God asks us to do something or leads us mm -hmm. in a quiet, still voice to do something, he will provide a way for us to accomplish it, either directly or indirectly. He will provide. He's not going to ask us to do something and then not give us the means to be able to accomplish it. So we have to have that faith in our foundational belief in God that whatever he asks of us, it's for our good and he will provide the way. All we have to do is learn to depend on him. Easier said than done, but it's very simple as Christ's message was simple about salvation. Uh, his message in this uh, uh, in, in the feeding of the 5,000 was a simple message and we need to take to heart. Would you like to lead us in closing prayer? I will. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another lesson. Thank you for another set of abundant blessings. Thank you for being here, for being with us now and then and always, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless us. We ask you that you continue to remind us that you're here for us, that you are able and you want to help us, and that we need to remember to ask you to do that. And we do that, Lord, while we think of our needs, while we think of the needs of our, the people around us, our family and our friends, the people in our community, in our nation and for people all over the world. Help us, Lord, to remember that when things get to be too much and when we just don't know quite how to, how to help, we just need to lift our eyes to you, let you know that we want to be part of, what, of, of your work, that we're willing and we just need you to help us figure out how to be able. And we ask this humbly, Lord, in your name and in your service, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Hopefully we'll be out of the deep freeze next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you're staying warm and dry and safe. And we're looking forward to seeing you. And until then, we tell you to have a good week. Right. We love you. We miss you. We're looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.